Hello, and welcome to Potent Offerings Theater, uh, a presentation of the work done in the 32nd Annual Manhattan Experimental Theater Workshop, or MXTW for short. My name is Gwethelyn Williams. It has been my pleasure to be the director of this summer's workshop. We're very happy to have all of you here to share in the work that this wonderful group of people have been doing this summer. So because of this online format this year, our performance is no longer tethered in space to Manhattan, Kansas. So we may have many people joining us who are seeing one of our productions for the first time this year. And to all of you, I want to definitely say welcome. And I hope you enjoy what you see. So we're not in the actual theater. So I don't have to tell you where the fire exits are. I don't have to ask you to turn your cell phone off. But there is a little bit of business that I do want to uh, inform you about having to do with the medium in which you're seeing our performance tonight. So the first one is regarding chat. The chat is available to you. You are welcome to use it during the show. If you find the chat distracting, you can turn it off and back on again at any time. Our show will be a little bit over an hour and a half tonight. We have not planned a formal intermission. However, in a YouTube premiere, you can pause the video if you need to step away from your screen. When you return to your screen, you can resume the video from where you paused it, and you can also scrub forward to any point uh, after where the, the playhead is in the, in the premiere. Um, so at any time, you're welcome to pause and step away and then come back and see the rest of the show. If you would like to interact more with the cast, if you have questions about something you saw in the show or want to know more about the process we used this summer, you are all invited to join us for a live talkback immediately following this show. That talkback will happen in a separate live streamed YouTube uh, video and I will appear again at the end of this performance to make sure that you have the link and you know how to get to that talkback if you would like to join us. We would love to have you. So. For some of you who may be seeing this performance for the first time or for the first time in a very long time, let me tell you a little bit about what it is you're about to see. So the first big question that I always get asked is what is experimental theater? So of course, experimental theater can be many things in many situations. For our purposes, we study theater artists that have a suspicion of the traditional narrative form of theater. Theater artists that share the idea that there may be techniques within the medium of theater that we can use to communicate with our audiences uh, that are outside of stories with beginnings, middles, and ends, and characters that behave in recognizable ways uh, like we would expect them to in real life. So basically anything outside of narrative realism could be considered experimental theater. So that's a very wide definition. And we studied 12 different plays this year, all of which had very different techniques that made them experimental in nature. So you will see tonight several different answers to the question, what is experimental theater? Uh, many different techniques in the pieces you're about to see. So now a little bit about the process that we use to create uh, this summer's workshop. So of course, this summer is not the same as other summers. Um, uh, in the time leading up to when the workshop was about to begin, it became very clear that we would not be able to hold the workshop in the traditional way, of course, because of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we knew it would not be safe for us to gather physically in one space. But once we realized that that was going to be the case, there was not a moment of hesitation uh, from any of us that were already working on the workshop for the summer that we would find a way to do the work anyway that we would move the workshop online. And once we made that decision to hold the workshop completely online from beginning to end, uh, we also realized that that meant that people from anywhere could participate. You did not have to be physically in Manhattan, Kansas. And so at that time, we invited our uh, alum, alums of our program to participate again. And so we invited, of course, current high school students and anyone who had ever participated in our program before uh, to participate this summer. So we have a nice, big, diverse group of folks ranging in age from 14 to 43, from different parts of the country, in different places in their lives and careers. And uh, working together with such a diverse group of people was really a pleasure. Um, since we, we were all apart, uh, it was really nice to have so people with so many different experiences 
be brought together for this experience, to work together in this way this summer. So when we began working together, not only <laughs> were we doing all of the normal work we do in order to explore experimental theater techniques and figure out what we can do together as an ensemble, but we were also learning how to use an entirely new medium from scratch. None of us had any experience <laughs> putting together a live theatrical performance over a video call. Um, so, and you know, what is this? Is it live theater? Well, no, it's not. We didn't end up presenting anything live. This has been pre-recorded. Um, so it's not live theater, but is it video art? Well, no, it's definitely not that either. The result of our work truly is a hybrid of performance presented through a video medium and specifically through a video conferencing. So learning to work in this new medium was actually a lot of fun. Um, so we had made so many discoveries. Um, we had to figure out a lot of ways to do things that uh, we would normally do in a different way. <laughs> but uh, it was all a lot of fun. But within this new way of working and all of these discoveries and trying to figure out the technology, our basic process remained exactly the same as it has for over 30 years. First, we spent two weeks reading and um, talking about examples of experimental theater from throughout history. Uh, and at that time, we were also doing physical and vocal exercises and lot, playing lots of games to figure out how we could communicate and present things through this medium. Then three weeks ago, the participants together chose what we call our target story. This is something we choose every year, and it's a piece of our shared culture, something our audiences will be at least a little bit familiar with to help them have an anchor and an understanding of the work that we're doing. Uh, so this year, the company chose Alice's Adventures in Wonderland as their target story, and they took as the main source for their work Lewis Carroll's original novel. So if you aren't familiar with the novel, uh, there is a synopsis on our show page that you can read quickly to familiarize yourself with the story. Uh, and so you can find a link to our show page in the information on this video, the information that appears below the video, or you can follow this link. That's right, I can do that. And <laughs> there appears a link that you can follow to our show page. Uh, most of the information that you are gonna hear presented by the directors tonight is also available on that show page. And I encourage you to go take a look at it and read it and learn more about our company, more about our process, more about what you've seen here tonight, and potentially more about Alice in Wonderland <laughs> if you would like that tool to help you understand what you're seeing tonight. So at the same time they chose the target story, they also chose from among the plays and playwrights we had studied, which of those techniques interested them most in order to explore using them themselves to create a new piece of theater. And based on their preferences and what they wanted to continue using, which techniques they wanted to continue using, we placed them into groups. And this year we have smaller groups and larger groups. <laughs> um, we tried to be as flexible and accessible as we could for everyone this summer, so we let everyone just sort of choose um, which kind of process they wanted to be involved in, whether it was a, a large group or a small group or both. And um, so we put them into groups and then together they spent about a week putting together a script, writing, coming up with an idea, writing, revising, and finalizing their script in one week. And then we had, well, we usually say two weeks to make staging decisions, but because we had to record our work this summer, that means we really only had about a week and a half to figure out how to present these scripts to you in this online format. And this is a workshop. It is process oriented. Uh, we worked as hard as we could up until the day we had to record to get the pieces as far along as we could in service of the scripts that uh, the performers had written. And that's what we're ready to share with you tonight. So uh, we're very excited for you to see what has been created here this summer. So this work is a lot of work every summer, <laughs> but uh, converting it into an online format was truly a huge task. I mean, just an incredible amount of work. And myself and all the performers and participants uh, we're very lucky to have an incredibly dedicated team of assistant directors this summer. 
Uh, so I, they are not here. I cannot introduce them to you, but you are about to see them. So I want to tell you who they are. So our directing team this summer was Ashley Donnert, Isaac Sorrell, Jim Hamilton, Lauren Fisher, and Megan Clark. And we also had a wonderful tech team, which was a much larger job this summer than it is some summers of Ash Flynn and Brandon Sargent. I also want to take just a moment to express my deep thanks and all of our deep thanks of everyone who is in the workshop to Dr. Jim Hamilton. He founded and developed this workshop uh, 32 years ago. He served as director of the workshop for the first 15 years and as producer for the next 15 years. And when he retired as producer uh, a couple years ago, uh, the wonderful and talented Lauren Fisher took over as producer. So I want to extend a special thanks to Jim and to Lauren for their producing duties. Uh, this workshop would not happen without them. So uh, I wanted you to know who those people are because you're going to see them. Because in order to help our audiences get the most out of our performances every year, we do like to actually give you a little bit of information about what it is you're about to see. This is a workshop performance. Why not just explain to you what it is uh, that you're about to see? There's something about the techniques that were used. And then, of course, the fact that it's all going to be based on Alice in Wonderland. So before each piece you're about to see, one of, the, one of the directors will come and give you a brief introduction about the piece. And so now I'm gonna quit talking so you can finally see some of this exciting new theater we've created. I'm gonna tell you about the first piece you're gonna see. So this first piece is one of our large group pieces. Uh, it is based on things found in Alice in Wonderland, but rather than using the techniques of any of the playwrights we studied, which is what we usually do, we decided that we would use some of our own techniques, some of the things we discovered and were truly delighted by about working in this new medium this summer. Uh, this piece was written by a great many of our company members and performed by a great many of them. It is too much of a mouthful for me to say out loud to you right now, but I invite you to go to our show page and check out our company list and uh, to see who it is that wrote and performed in this piece. So all of us would like to now welcome you to join us down the rabbit hole. We're all mad here. You're mad. Okay. I'm mad. We're all mad here. You're mad. I'm mad. I'm mad. You're mad. We're all mad here. We're all mad here. I'm mad. You're mad. We're all mad here. We're all mad here. I'm mad. Clean cup, move down. Clean cup, move down. Sit down. Up above the world you fly, like a tea tray in the sky. Up above the world you fly, like a tea tray in the sky. Up above the world so high, like a tea tray. Alice was beginning to get very tired sitting by her sister on the bank. Tut, tut, child. Alice looked all round the table, but there was nothing on it but tea. Yes, that's it, said the hatter with a sigh. It's always tea time. The players all played at once without waiting for turns, quarreling all the while and fighting for the hedgehogs. They were obliged to have him with them, the mock turtle said, for no wise fish would go anywhere without a porpoise. No, no, said the queen. Sentence first, verdict afterward. Oh, <laughs> 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 
Clean cup, move down. Clean cup, no room, 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 her first idea was that she had somehow fallen into the tree. I wish I hadn't cried so much. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. A great girl like you to go on crying in this way. <sighs> I shall be punished for it now, I suppose. By being drowned in my own tears. Clean cup, move down. Clean cup, clean cup, clean cup move down. Move down. No room. 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 No room, sit down. What a curious feeling. I must be shutting up like a telescope. I seem to be growing small again. It was much pleasanter at home when one was always growing and shrinking. Goodbye. Beat. Was I the same when I got up this morning? Who in the world am I? Clean cup, move down. Clean cup, move down. Clean cup, move down. Clean no room, no room. 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 Hogs. And the mallets live flamingos. And the soldiers had to double themselves up to stand on their hands and feet to make the arches. The balls were live hedgehogs. The mallets live flamingos. And the soldiers had to double themselves up to stand on their hands and feet to make the arches. Sentence before verdict. Open the heads. Clean cut, move down. Clean cut, move down. Move down. Move down. Move down. No room. 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 We must burn the house down. We must burn the house down. She's going to get me executed as sure as ferrets are ferrets. Clean cut, move down. Clean cut, move down. 
New Zealand or Australia? Who in the world am I? Ah, oh, that's the great puzzle. I told you, butter wouldn't suit the words. But I don't want to go among mad people. Alice had no idea what latitude was, or longitude either. But thoughts they were nice grand words to say. Everything's got a moral, if only you can find it. But it's no use now to pretend to be two people. Why, there's hardly enough of me left to make one respectable person. There ought to be a book about me that there ought. They're dreadfully fond of beheading people here. All rabbit holes always this deep? How do you know I'm mad? You must be, or you wouldn't have come here. Hi. Betsu Yaku Minoru was a Japanese playwright born in Manchuria in 1937 and lived most of his life in Japan where he is a widely recognized playwright. He was largely responsible for a theater of the absurd movement in Japan following World War II. In keeping with the theater of the absurd movement, he worries about memory, our inability, or our unwillingness to remember the consequences of our conduct, and sometimes even our own very own actions. He thinks that rituals are the means by which we tend to forget or try to forget what we know to be the case. So in this piece written by Winona, Jana, Bernie, and Jenny called The Queen's Croquet Ground, following uh, the uh, chapter title, chapter eight of Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, the croquet game has become the ritual which everyone must follow and also enables people to forget what they have done. So please watch with me this piece, The Queen's Croquet Ground. Thank you. Alice 
Alice opened the door and found that it led into a small passage, not much larger than a rat hole. She knelt down and looked along the passage into the loveliest garden you ever saw. How she longed to get out of that dark hall and wander about among those beds of bright flowers and those cool fountains, but she could not even get her head through the doorway. And even if my head would go through, thought poor Alice, it would be of very little use without my shoulders. Are you having fun, Duchess? I am. Good. Perhaps no one else is joining us today. What a shame. Perhaps they have the date wrong. Lovely day today, isn't it? Indeed it is. Not a cloud in the sky. Are you here to join the game of croquet? Yes, I am. I see that you are as well. <gasps> Why, yes. And what a fine day to play a game of croquet. Oh, hello. Who are you? I'm the Mock Turtle, your croquet instructor, Marianne. I don't know who Marianne is. I'm Alice. I don't know how to play. I couldn't bear it if the game is not played correctly. Oh, I just couldn't bear it. No, no, no. That will never do. Every three days, I have to come all this way to teach you. Silly girl, how could you forget? Croquet is a simple game, an innocent pastime of sorts. When did you teach this to me? I don't know. I've shown Marianne, but you say you were not Marianne, so I can't have shown you. I wonder what happened to Marianne. Maybe the king knows what happened to her. What are you talking about, Turtle? There is no king. The king is dead. Absurd. I'd certainly remember the death of my own husband. I'd certainly remember learning croquet if it were something I cared about. It's the queen who cares. Everyone must play or off with your shoes. That doesn't sound like something I'd say. Marianne, does that sound like something I'd say? You would say off with your head. I keep telling you my name is Alice. I don't even know anyone named Marianne. I've never met somebody who doesn't know their own name. Consider me on the other hand. I don't even know what a mock turtle is. Why, you're what mock turtle soup is made of. Isn't that fun? Yes, it is very fun. And soup is one of my favorite meals. Isn't it funny how insignificant everything seems near the end? Come on now. I've invited you all here to play croquet. I would love to play. The players all played at once without waiting for turns, quarreling all the while and fighting for the hedgehogs. And in a very short time, the queen was in a furious passion and went stamping about and shouting, Off with his head! Or, Off with her head! About once in a minute. Are those croquet balls in your bag? They seem too large for regulation play. Well, I tend to use whatever I have handy. There's plenty of material laying around. What do you mean? Around the castle, at least. There are plenty of heads lying around. More on the weekends. Oh. I've never noticed that before. Perhaps I'm used to a particularly dedicated waste management department. The rules weren't written. They peppered the air. In the hospital, the footman with eyes like a frog lay, head bandaged after his run-in with a large ceramic plate. The footman with a face like a fish hadn't been seen in days. Heads hung around the castle walls. The towering hourglass in the square stood still. A disheveled tea party of political prisoners circled their table on display. If you're not Marianne, where is she? I invited her. Perhaps I should give her a call. She was beheaded last Saturday. They'll have stuffed her body in a bag until it can be buried. Say, do you hear that? The ringing? Where is it coming from? Huh! Peculiar! Perhaps that means she is nearby. If you're not Marianne, you will want to talk to her. Are there 
croquet mallets in your bag? Oh, why, of course not. You can't keep flamingos in a bag. Where'd you get a crazy idea like that, Mary Ann? Oh, oh, yes. Now I remember, but I'm Alice. You play croquet with heads and axes. I remember hedgehogs and flamingos. Balls and mallets make the most sense, of course. I think, I think the ringing might be coming from your bag. Well, that is quite odd. Let me see. Got it! Hello? Marianne? Oh, it's for you, Marianne. Marianne, you are here. Let the game begin. I don't know how to begin. What will happen if I break the rules? What fun, said the griffin, half to itself, half to Alice. What is the fun, said Alice. Why she, said the griffin, it's all her fancy that. They never executes nobody, you know. Come on. You remember something about croquet lessons. The griffin was there too. Is he coming today? No, the griffin died long ago. Yes, the griffin was killed long ago. Beheaded by the queen. You were there, Marianne. I am certain of it. I saw you there. No one was ever killed by the queen. She threatens, but the king pardons. What are you talking about, Marianne? There is no king. I remember his head rolling down the hill and coming to rest among the rose bushes and the canvas bag they collected it in. I remember he bled. Sometimes they bleed and sometimes they don't. It depends on the angle of the cut. A large rose tree stood near the entrance of the garden. The roses growing on it were white, but there were three gardeners at it, busily painting them red. Alice thought this a very curious thing, and she went nearer to watch them. My name is not Mary Ann. You do look a lot like Mary Ann. You sound like her too. If you're not Mary Ann, then who are you? I, I don't know. This morning, I was sure of who I was, but I kept changing. What do you mean by that? Well, I was big, then I was small. I feel as if I'm a different person from who I was this morning. Well, if you don't even know who you are, how do you expect us to? You said you were certain of the person you were this morning, but now you don't know who you are. What was your name this morning? Alice. Who's to say you weren't still Alice? Perhaps you're a different person than you were this morning. Perhaps you're just an Alice, an Alice who's changed. People do change, you know. Maybe. But then, why do people still call me by a different name? If I'm still Alice, why do I feel so different? People call you Marianne because they think you are Marianne. That does not make you Marianne. Why did you call me Marianne? I thought you were Marianne. All the time they were playing, the queen never left off quarreling with the other players and shouting, off with his head, or off with her head. Those whom she sentenced were taken into custody by the soldiers, who of course had to leave off being arches to do this, so that by the end of half an hour or so, there were no arches left, and all the players, except the king, the queen, and Alice, were in custody and under sentence of execution. The teacher's heads, the hatter's heads, the children's heads, the heads of the servants, and guards, and protesters, and political prisoners, and jurors. They were not gone, but they were off. Their shoes lay in piles, their gloves and fans passed on, to be worn by other masters. It's your turn. Of course. Sorry. You were so angry when the king pardoned Marianne. And so you said to him, off with your head. 
it's your turn. Here, if you swing your mallet like so, you can get a straight shot. Who would you look at that? Right through the wicket. I can't remember if it bled. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. Depends on the angle of the cut. I remember now, that day. We were turning around to leave when his head went off. I remember. I was turned away when his head went off, but little spurts of blood splashed the back of my neck. It stained your hair in a little streak. I scrubbed it with salt and soap and pepper, but it won't come out. It won't ever come out. The queen turned crimson with fury and, after glaring at her for a moment like a wild beast, screamed, Off with her head! Off! Nonsense! said Alice very loudly and decidedly, and the queen was silent. Who am I? You play croquet with heads and axes. Hedgehogs and flamingos. There were never any beheadings. The king pardons them all. It's your turn. You're in the jaws of the wicket. The hedgehog carcasses bob up and down in the choppy water, unsettled as water is before a brutal storm. The stench of rotting meat permeates the air. Scattered along the field are the decapitated heads of mice, turtles, rabbits, and other animals. Blood soaks the grass. A group of animals remains playing the game of croquet, their mallets swinging high into the air. They put on their best smiles. Marianne was such a dedicated student. It was a treat to watch her play. It's not Marianne you're remembering. It's the head. I heard the king say we are pardoned. We were in the rose garden. There is no king. There is only... No, no. I'd remember if it had happened that way. Surely, <laughs> I'd remember. But how did they paint the roses red? It was the dead of winter. They used blood. You remember. It's your turn. It's a straight shot through the wicket if you swing your mallet at the right angle. On the field gathers a menagerie of animals. They look out into the green grass with wistfulness in their eyes. There are flamingos squirming in their hands. Dead carcasses of hedgehogs float belly up in the fountain, the ripples of the water tumbling the bodies against its stone. Mary Ann, who was not Alice, slept but did not dream, head neatly removed, in the belly of a canvas bag cinched with bloodied strings. The Goat Island Performance Group created their performances by responding to directives. They then responded to and combined responses to make and connect moments of performance. This created a harmonizing of actions and reactions. Goat Island utilizes all aspects of performance that could be available to them when creating their pieces, including text, movement, song, and dance. Reappropriated ideas such as choreography and snippets from other cultural sources that they feel connect to the material they are creating are also used. The meaning of what they are creating is found as it is being created or even after it has been performed. In You Only Have to Find It, the group explored various themes from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by weaving together their responses to the text. We became obsessed with this fantasy of exploration, and it bled into real life. The tale from a land far, far away. Everyone thinks the line is, I'm late, I'm late, for a very important date. So we all kind of have that collective false memory. Most important thing. The good side is messy, so people think they're actually the bad guys, because they aren't perfect, 
and then turn around and excuse the bad guys because there's less critical thinking to have to do there. Good-hearted and the most powerful, seduced by the dark side. Are they allowed to be doing the things they do? It's never made clear. There's definitely a cultural significance that's kept it going for so long. There's redeeming factors, but quite frankly, it is very mediocre and unclear. Maybe it gets better if you watch more? The sets are pretty good, the acting is alright. I have no idea about the plot line, though. Everything has a moral. You only have to find it. Check under the couch. Inside of the books. At the bottom of your coffee cup in the morning. You never knew, and the fathers with their eyes are craving you. Everything has a moral. You only have to find it. At the bottom of your coffee cup in the morning. Dig holes in your yard in search of it. Stand in the streets and scream its name. Curtsying is done by placing one foot slightly behind the other and bending both knees to lower oneself a few inches. You should keep your back straight and maintain eye contact rather than lowering one's gaze and feigned humility. The right foot provides strength and stability for the body. And since it is its fortress, you should do this movement with your left foot because it is weaker than your right. I gotta tell you, curtsying is not easy. Everything has a moral. You only have to find it. How does a lobster brush its shell? Facing away from the camera, brush your hair with the backside of the brush. Lobsters brush their shells the same way snails brush theirs, obviously. The image of a lobster with a wig on combing its hair. What a lovely day to have a nice clean lobster. That's a brushed shell, I think. Check under the couch. Inside, Inside of books. books. The bottom of your coffee cup in the morning. A master class in human relations. Let us observe the Duchess and the Mock Lobster. Hello. I looked in the mirror today and I loved what I saw. Oh, wow. How narcissistic of you. Well, I overheard a conversation and observed an interaction with a notable thought leader. Wow, how are you? Great, I ate at this new restaurant. Did you tea with the notable thought leader? Well, what do you like to do for fun? Oh, I'm always making soup for my growing baby boy. He's a pig. Oink, oink, oink. Lingering on in a conversation that is going nowhere is one of the most awkward things that you can do. So don't be afraid to make an escape. One way is to have your attention diverted elsewhere. Another way is to simply excuse yourself and move on to a new group or location. Fare ye all well, Alice. Farewell, Alice. Fare you as well as may be, all ice. Take care of your health, alas. 
I ponder ethereal and otherworldly spaces. I am far from home. I come to the table for tea with strangers. I eat their offered bread. I no longer know my body. The shadow it casts is not my shape. I walk with feet heavier than my own. I speak the words of another's tongue. Liminal spaces, places where ley lines cross, unnoticeable to humans, yet feral cats seem to gather as though drawn by an invisible force. Where they congregate and scream at the moon. And she answers back. For the sound is amplified immeasurably. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 as well as you deserve, Atlas. Farewell, well. Or if you'd rather have it so lustily, a list. Fare you well as you are worthy at last. Everything has a moral. You only have to find it. Check under the couch. Inside of the books. At the bottom of your coffee cup in the morning. Dig holes in the yard in search of it. Stand in the streets and scream its name. at least. If you send me away, farewell till tomorrow, Alish. The fork and the spoon are the only things that should go into the mouth. Never lick the knife. We've been obeying in advance for a long time. We taught power what to do to control us. Ensure that your neighbors don't feel obligated to wait as well. We allowed ourselves to adapt to oppression. Never eat with your mouth open. Conversation can be awkward when the other person is eating. We've done it to ourselves. We've made a mess of things. It is fine to eat during a conversation. Learning how to eat and talk is an essential social skill. We must hunger for knowledge. We must drink knowledge into our bodies. Avoid making noises of any kind while eating, such as slurping soup. We must plant knowledge in our gardens. We must spread knowledge like a disease. Be careful about your gestures. Gestures such as smacking the lips or rubbing the tummy are inappropriate. Similarly, destroy the swastikas and confederate monuments. And remember the golden rule of table manners. Purge the landscape with your kindness. 
Well, I must bid you goodbye. Time calls me away. Fare ye well, all us. Hello again. So normally after intermission, I would come back out and say a few more things to the audience. We're not gonna have a formal intermission as I told you, but we are about halfway done with our show. So I thought I would say a few of those things now before I introduce the next piece. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna say thank you to you, our viewers, for being here with us. We know that sometimes we ask a lot of our audiences while they're watching our performances. And so the fact that you're still here and still willing to do this work with our company this summer means a lot to us. Thank you so much for tuning in. I also wanna say hi to all of our alums who may be watching. This is such a collaborative process that anyone who has ever participated has really truly helped the workshop become what it is today. So to all of you out there watching who have been in the workshop at any point in the past, Thank you so much for your contributions to this workshop and thank you for uh, tuning in to support this summer's company. And we really hope that we'll get to see you in person sometime soon at another of our performances in the future. So thank you so much to all of our alums. I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors this summer. The Macademy season sponsor is SPS Companies Incorporated. The educational season sponsor is Keating and Associates. And we have a gold level sponsor for this program, and that is Jan and Steve Gallitzer. Thank you so much, Gallitzers. And we have a silver level sponsor for this program, Jane Gibson. Thank you so much, Jane. Uh, this program couldn't happen without these sponsorships, and we really appreciate it. I also want to thank all of our wonder wonderful individual donors. Please see our show page for a full listing of the people who donated in support of this program this summer. Uh, we we could not do this without the wonderful financial support of our donors. And so if you watching are one of those people, I want to say thank you to you right now. Thank you so much for your support. And speaking of donations, uh, it is the time when I will mention that um, we did decide not to charge an admission for this summer's show. We wanted to make sure as many people as possible could see it. Uh, but if you enjoy the work that you're seeing, if you want to express your appreciation for the work that this company did this summer, and if you're able to, we would love to invite you to make a donation in support of our program and in support of the Manhattan Arts Center. So when I reappear at the end of the show to make sure you have that link to get to the talk back, I will also provide you with information about how you can go and make a donation if you would like to. So thank you very much for considering making a donation to support this work. I also want to thank at this time the staff of the Manhattan Arts Center. We're very proud to be a program of the Manhattan Arts Center. It's a wonderful resource for the arts in the Manhattan, Kansas community. And uh, we may not have been together in the same building this summer, but the staff of the Arts Center really did a lot to support this program. We couldn't have done it without them. So thank you so much to all of you uh, working at the Arts Center. We really appreciate your support. And then I want to sort of acknowledge sort of a special situation this summer. I want to extend a special thank you to all of the performers and all of the people who participated in this summer's workshop because something sort of unique happened this summer in that not only were all of you brave enough to sign up to uh, do this work in this set of unknown circumstances and during all this uncertainty, but also you then opened up your homes and allowed the work that happened this summer to happen in your own homes. Essentially, we held a workshop at your house. And I just want to acknowledge uh, that that was a very special situation. And I want to thank you all for being willing to share your homes with us in order for this work to happen this summer. And that leads me to another really big thank you, very important, and that is I want to extend on behalf of myself and on behalf of the entire company, everybody who worked on the workshop this summer, I want to extend a special thanks to those of you who were cohabitating with us as we did this work. So our families, our roommates, anyone who was staying with us while we did the work, we couldn't have done it without your support. 
thank you so much for letting us just be really weird in front of our computers fairly often <laughs> over the last five weeks. Uh, I know for some people it was quite a disruption and we really, all of us in the company, really appreciate your sharing your homes with us in that way. So thank you to our roommates and families and everyone else who allowed us <laughs> to have a workshop in our own homes this summer. Okay, so now I'm going to announce the next piece. Our next piece is a large group piece. It has most of the company in it and was written by most of the company. So rather than list off all those names, I'm gonna let you look that up on the, pro, on the performance page. So this piece was created using the techniques of Gertrude Stein. So Gertrude Stein's plays are characterized by wordplay, rhythmic language, and abstract nature, very simple sentences. She desired her plays to be the essence of what happened and made them so by telling what could be told if one did not tell anything. What does that mean? Well, she creates emotional landscapes using the sounds of the syllables together rather than the meanings of the words. So if you're using Stein's techniques, it's all about how it sounds. In a pack of cards, we explore some of the emotional content found in Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. So we would now invite you to enjoy a pack of cards. Something comes at me like a jack-in-the-box and up I goes like a sky rocket. Like a jack-in-the-box goes like a sky rocket. Comes up and I goes. Begin at the beginning and go on till you come to the end. Then stop. Four tales. The first, I am long. The second, I am sad. The third, I am sad and I am long. A sad tale. A mouse tale. Do you know what a tale is? First racer. Mine is a sad and a long tale. Second racer. Mine is a wrong and a long tale. Do you know for whom a tale is told? I am different today. I am more different than today, than yesterday. I am I, I am I, I am I. She is she and I am I. I am oh so late. We called him Tortoise because he taught us. Reeling and writhing of course, to begin with. Arithmetic, ambition, distraction, uglification, and derision. Land under pardon, beyond the pale, beyond the dome, a well-laid line of mice, of teacups and hats of every kind, there are those seats we wish to move down. A clean place awaits. Bread and butter butler. Pepper makes people hot-tempered. Pepper and treacle and orange marmalade. Pepper, more pepper. This is pepper. Into the soup, pepper. More pepper into the pepper soup. Treat it trickily, tread lightly. Act two, I am not getting on at all well. The trial of the stolen tarts. I am told I have done something, so I have done it. Tenth juror, so he has done it. Eleventh juror, so he did it. Twelfth juror, so he will do it. Off with his head. The words are wording wonderfully. The words don't fit, and neither does Alice. Mean your mischief. Hold your tongue. Cry me and Alice. Where is my life vest? Where is my heart? Washing and sailing away. 
stand apprised of the tale, only a thimble, only a thimble, wrongly too dimble. There is who is a hookah? There I am was a hookah. The best way to explain is to do it. Act two. I left the key behind. Unshut. Oh, to be shut up like a telescope, expanding out, unstacked, unshut. The curious feeling of reeling down and further down. Offer him the crown, otter him around, otherwise crouch down. Mouth stretch and grin and all grin and grin and stretch and all mouth grin and stretch, stretch with gently smiling jaws. Bird, fetch her, go fetch her, mouser, purr, prowler. Find her outside sitting and came in, jumping ever bigger, only falling back the same. Act two, the rules do not exist. Nobody asked your opinion, ask your opinion, ask it nicely. What's your opinion? Nobody asked. We wonder. A barrel full of what? There is little to be said about what you are. I know and question not my author. I know, I know, you know. I was meant to be read, they said. I was meant to be read, they said. They had not read about red in the language of flower, but what about when it is not? What it is or when it is not, when it is any more. What when then if all I knew before is not now, or maybe even then. You are nothing but a pack of cards. Nothing but a house of cards. What, what a curious, curious dream one dreams. Dreams and dreams of if only one could wake to dream a new dream again for before and beyond. Artaud's theater of cruelty sought to rip away the barrier between audience and performer and present images so inescapable the audience was forced to access their subconscious and experience revelations about human nature. He strove to make theater about experience rather than rhetorical message. Elaborate imagery is presented in the most bare bones structure of storytelling, often with a sense of primitivism and mounting violence. In this year's piece, the story of Alice's adventures in Wonderland is told through short scenes that focus on images and sensations over dialogue and plot and create a world more unsettling than that which Lewis Carroll originally built. Blake, Hannah, Jess, Teresa, and Trevor proudly present a godlike effort to continue for no apparent reason. Sinking, spinning, spiraling down, down. Three things, cabinet full of jams, shelves of books, maps hung upon pegs. Three things, slight wind rushing, trickle of far off water, chirps of bats lost in darkness. Three things, cotton dress, root, sun, sinking, spinning, spiraling down, down, two things. Poison labeled drink me, cake labeled eat me, two things, laughter, wind and birds, shutting up and unfurling. Eyes go from temporary sadness to immediate panic. There is no thrashing, no cry for help. Limbs turn and bend and try to swim. Exhaustion. A godlike effort to continue. Vision tunnels and the scene grows distant. Voices shatter over the waves. Ahem! Speak English. Ahem! 
Thank you. Certainly much. Elation and caterpillars in the stomach. Pressure in the ears. Pins in the chest. Skin spread too thinly over bone. A great and looming unknown. Swallowing feet and stretching the body through a dark, swollen hose. This vacuous drain pipe of soil and splinters, broken chairs and clocks. This is where luminous lamp-like eyes are endless sunrises, sunrises and accordion smiles. Gravity has abandoned reality. A betrayal of limbs and limbic system, presentation of a complex fragility. Belligerent husk battling bile, somnambulant of time and space, slipping between floorboards and mirrors. Want to writhe, want to scream. Who am I? Who am I? Who are you? Who are you? Time to change. I feel wrong. Time to change. Are you satisfied? Who are you? Who small, too big, are too small, you? Too big, too small, too big, Who are too you? Small, Who big, are you? Too small, too big, Who too are small, you? Too big, too small, too big. There is nothing wrong. There is nothing wrong. There is nothing wrong. There is nothing wrong. Are you Alice? Serpent! A serpent, you say? Selfish in every way. An immediate and infinite drop, no above and no below, a suspended tumble to nowhere. A vibrating drone, a whooshing of invisible objects in space, a whirring of time breaking, lights are a violent shaking of a nation blinds at sunset and blinking lights of a carnival attraction. The subtle and menacing tones turn to unidentifiable melodies that ring of distant memories and future festivities or explosions. Colors and image begin to pulse and dim, ghostly objects emerging for a moment and then screaming back into the darkness. The melodies begin to turn into sounds that seem like words. The end is coming. A map. Marble Away. For me, none for you. Books on books on books. Learn it all. Who are you? Turn, turn, turn into someone. Reverse is a direction. How's your head? Small, Ideas you going up, go bodies going down. The paper thin walls shake at the cries. Whatever will I do with this pig? I mean, baby. Whatever will I do with this troublesome pig, I mean baby? Is there anywhere this pig, I mean baby, can go that is not one of the rooms in this tormented house? This house is breaking. This house is infested, crumbling into termites. It is crawling and bawling, and walls cannot contain the cries. 
I'm glad Wonderland instituted this policy where you eat your babies. Super sustainable. Circular economies are the future. Life sustaining life. God is a cat, and the cat is starving. No more room in the belly, but a cat makes room. Room for all. Come on in. Slide right past these pearly whites. A divine invitation. It is as if the earth has been gutted, dredged veins, a columnar void of nothing but momentum, velocity and vertigo, ungraspable, unbearable, inside the earth's hollow womb unlining itself with cement. Weightlessness. A slip just the smallest of the mind. crack in the surface. Just the smallest crack, crack it open. in the surface. Crack it open. Crack it open. Crack it, crack it, open. it open. Crack it open. We are We're all, all mad, mad here. here. Clack, 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 squeaky little rabbits. Just the, the smallest crack the in markers. the surface. Peel crack off it your open. skin and crack wear it, it as a coat. Crack it open. You wear it. You wear it. We're you wear it. Here. What if madness is nothing more than a kaleidoscopic trip just of the color? Smallest crack in the what surface. if we're just high? Time to drown, everyone. Drown your sorrows in your tea. A neon blackout. No light, no limbs, no sight, no sound. Except there, the smell of burnt oranges filling nostrils. Swallow walls which grow moss-spelled words in a language from another's dream. Spineless books. Cupboards overflowing, down, 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 down. There is no moral. Take care of the scents, and the sounds will take care of themselves. Never imagine yourself not to be otherwise, and what it might appear to others that you were, or might have been, was not otherwise, and what you had been would have appeared to them to be otherwise. A fine day! The fine day. Don't tell me what to do. What is your sorrow? Sit down and don't speak till I've finished. <laughs> You needn't be so proud. There is a bare field, barren dirt, desert, a croquet court, dried up, overgrown with patchy scraggle grass, cracked asphalt, scraped kneecaps, discarded like chitin, twitching motions like roaches scattering in the light. Grudge crab crawl with cocked head. Sentence before verdict. Sentence before verdict. Where never were tarts to begin with. The tarts were never stolen. Who stole the tarts? Wake up and smell the roses. Painted red and blood. Painted red and blood to hide the white. Bloody red. red chlamydial, chlamydial prolapsed throat. Esophageal blossoms congeal. Gush boils. Oysters. Pearls. Queen. Empathy can only be established when a person meets the standards of authentic innocence. Establish victimhood and moral purity. You are far too tall to be innocent. Over one mile high, 
threatening to civil society. Purge the croquet court. It must be cleansed. Bodies that arouse feelings of fear, disgust, rage, guilt, or discomfort must be made disposable and targeted for removal. Oh, how I wish to feel safe again. Yes, throw her in the maze of roses. Cancelled. Our toe is cancelled. Disperse the area. Alice wakes up. She's pooped herself. Oh my, Alice! You've done it again! Quite feral, this treacle. The next piece you are about to see is written under the influence of contemporary Asian American playwright Young Jean Lee. Lee presents characters in her plays who are always in tenuous negotiation with how they and others identify them. Her works often undermine all expectations of dramatic structure. Her characters openly negotiate the creation of the play as it happens, and their role in getting it right, with which they almost never succeed. Additionally, her characters reveal very plainly their innermost fears and humiliations, and though masked in comedy, these truths reveal the concerns of both the author and the audience alike. In The Rowboat Stories, written by Brett, Jordan, Emma, Alex, and Evan, and performed by Brett, Jordan, Emma, and Alex, the denizens of Wonderland attempt to continue their duties as the characters in Lewis Carroll's classic story, all while on a Zoom call. Hello, denizens of Wonderland. Due to current circumstances, we've decided to have a virtual tea party and you're invited. So settle in, have some bread and butter and enjoy. We're late, we're late. We're a very important date. It's time to say hello, goodbye. We're late, we're late, we're late. The queen of hearts, she made some tarts all on a summer's day. The knave of hearts, he stole those tarts and took them clean away. And then Wonderland had a tea party. Well, you see my pocket watch and this pocket watch, mind you, tells not the hour and minutes, rather the day of the month. Well, it's off by two days. Do you know what that does to a man? Not knowing quite for sure what day or month it is. It's enough to drive you mad. Anyways, they say a bro even a broken watch is right twice a day, but that's not the case with my watch because- What would you look at the time? Tea party's over. Hello? Is anyone there? Dinah? Dinah? Oh dear, I fear I've lost my cat. Uemasha? Maybe someone will answer? Hello? My name's Alice. I fear I found my way into your Zoom call. I tried to, tried to type in the Zoom address, but there's just so many numbers and they're so hard to keep track of. And you see these numbers, they're so small and it's just so hard to see. Let me try and type this in again. No, that's not it either. Maybe I'll just stay here. The tea party's ever so much more nicer than poetry lessons. No room. No, no room. room. No room. But, but there's plenty of room. Have some wine. I don't see any wine. There isn't any. Wait, you're the cat, you're the hatter, you're the queen. From the robot stories Mr. Carroll spoke of en route to Godstow. I remember. Oh, those are such wonderful stories. And everybody remembers them because I told him to write them down. A turtle, queen, smirking cat, an anxious rabbit, and a hard-pressed cook go to a tea party. The mock turtle says, where's the host? And the queen of hearts says, to think it's smart to invite the queen of hearts for tarts. Alice. Want to arm wrestle? Sure. That's not it. That this isn't working. This is the stupidest tea party I was ever at in all my life. My name 
name's Reginald, and I'm the queen's cook. I met the mock turtle once, and he was like, I have this idea that I am a turtle, but why when I speak do I sound like a cow? I miss being a turtle. I miss going to school. I can't control my impulse to eat grass when all I want is a nice clump of seaweed. I think Picasso looked at me and said, wow, what a strange shape. <laughs> oh. Oh. The soup was delicious, but it needed more pepper. And take his head off outside. Hi, queen. Hello, cook. My cook. Will you ever learn my name? <laughs> no. <coughs> it's too, it's too peppery. <coughs> Cook, why is there so much pepper in my soup? Well, as my name suggests, I'm the cook. So I will say if there's too much pepper in a soup or not. <coughs> too much pepper, so what? Off with your head. But the real question is, what name should I put on my death certificate? <laughs> Two little maids were heard to say they dwelt in London City. This summer's day, too hot to play, and picture books are pretty. So curling up like little mice and clasping hand in hand, they read and whispered, ain't it nice, the tale of Wonderland. Hello, cat. Hello, you. I don't know what, but I think, I think that something in Wonderland makes me sick. I think it makes all of us sick. The caterpillar never turns into a butterfly. And I, I order executions of people who never die. And you, you never purr. You only grin. I always grin because I'm never grim. Besides, that doesn't make any sense. People are not like caterpillars or butterflies. Look at me, look at my smile. I grin like a Cheshire Cat, and I've always grinned like a Cheshire Cat. People may change over time, but not like caterpillars in these discrete periods. We do not witness these changes. We are not caterpillars. Well, if we're not caterpillars, then what, then what are we like? We are like this bottle of drink me. We stay as we are and change very quickly and become static again. Then, when we need to change again, we eat the cake labeled eat me, and then very quickly become stagnant again. If you are looking at the right time, you may notice these changes, but the changes happen so quickly that if you blink, then you miss it. We are who we are until we face a crisis. And if we become, we become who we become, and, and we stay as the person we become until we encounter another crisis. We eat the eat me cake and drink the drink me bottle, but we never see the change. Okay. So we're all just sitting around waiting for the next to come along. And if the next crisis doesn't come along, then we stay as we are forever, static and unmovable. It's only by crisis that we change. That is... Very stupid. I would say off with your head, but we've tried that before. Yes. That is also very stupid. Hello, your majesty. 
Hello, milliner. Why is a raven like a writing desk? I don't have time for this. How about this? I know what you're thinking. The Mad Hatter and the Queen of Hearts don't meet until the trial. And you're right, of course. But it's very boring to have the March Hare and the Dormouse over for tea. So when you're not looking, we invite other people over for tea. I'm not mad, or not mad on purpose. When I was a younger hatter, I worked as a younger milliner. I made the most beautiful hats. The queen would send her ladies to come and look at my hats. The queen of England, not the queen of hearts. She has terrible tasted hats. Off with his head. Well, I suppose it's time for my confessional. I hear we're all supposed to do them and my story is the most important story for I am the queen. Before I married the king of hearts, I was Elizabeth of York. I was Queen Victoria. I was Queen Margaret. Like all great women, the story of who I was before I married the king has been lost to time. I want to pet the flamingos. I want to smell the white roses. But I have an image, the King of Hearts, my husband did not marry me so I could be weak. He married me so I could be strong. Let them eat cake. I'm bored. And characters were bored in Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, Louis would write in a caucus race. Queens do not race. I do enjoy a good game of cards. Splendid. What's a caucus race? Let me show you. people in first place it is hard because the sporting doesn't happen in the same place wait did we just learn something no for a tale from such a hawker of morals i don't believe the story sticks the landing oh, oh lily, lily. Yeah. fur and whiskers to think I could hop in from my paws into a full-fledged character with such a paucity of clauses. I memorize things so I don't need a calendar, but I forget the time easily. Time keeps passing and I don't have time to rest and calm down. Forgetting about time passing. Stressful.
It has long been a dream of ours to share the methods developed in the Manhattan Experimental Theater Workshop with as many people as possible. In spring of 2016, we had the opportunity to begin our collaboration with the Norwegian Experimental Theater Workshop, or NEXT. NEXT is a program of Sena Lusa Productions of Oslo, Norway, which provides programs for young people to develop and grow on stage, in their community, and as human beings. The piece you are about to see, Drutlas, Out We Go, was created collaboratively by company members of NEXT and MXTW together. The piece uses the techniques of Gertrude Stein, whose style is characterized by use of wordplay, rhythmic language, and was informed by the abstract portraits of Picasso and the Cubists. Rutles, Out We Go, is not telling the story of Alice in Wonderland. Instead, the participants began their work by having a conversation about ideas and issues that connect us all right now, regardless of where we are. The lines will be performed in a mixture of Norwegian and English. Written and performed by Alex, Blake, Danny, Emma Kay, Jana, Jordan, Macy, Astrid Hoss, Selina Sandberg, Frederica Folberg. Directed by Megan Clark, Ashley Donnert, Gwethelyn Williams, Jim Hamilton, Lauren Fisher, Isaac Sorrell, Louisa Warley, Mariana Ekmalmussen, and Rolf Mork. Please enjoy Rutlas, Out We Go. Quiet, oh so quiet. Everything is amplified, deafening, buzzing, threatening, menacing, amplification of existence. We find solace there. Six feet, six feet, six feet, six. Ensomhet. Ingen her, jeg er her, jeg er inne. Sola låst. Borte. Lei seg, lei meg, lei av, lei inn, lei ut, lei opp, lei ned. Bakgrunnsstøyen, den blir ikke kvitt. Kvitt eller dobbelt. Let it flow, let it sting, let them shape you as flesh from wood and bones and sticks. Plant yourself in this time. Remember. The roots go up and out. Out we go. Out, up, away. Away from, apart from. Can you hear me? Rutine. Rutinen i ruiner. Døra låst kunne falle sammen sitte fast. Nå snurrer ikke alt. Sola i isolasjonen. Hva om jeg ikke husker? Litt rund i kantene. Det må du huske på der du sitter på husken og husker. Important to know what is certain that no certain time this is. A portrait of knowingness and knowing less. This is not the same time now. Are you there? Puste igjen. Husker du svelene og barna? Puste igjen. Pannekaken som aldri blir helt perfekt. Blir stekt. Sprekt. Ikke hele veien rundt. Vær rund i kantene. Puste igjen. Vi vet ingenting. Verden har ingenting. Vi vet ingenting. Jeg vil ut. Patience prevents patience. Be patient. Time ticking on. Don't be a patient. Echo through the empty streets. Knowing this and know less. Six feet six feet six feet six. All there is is inside. Peace 
peaceful pieces of myself. Drowning, amplification, existence, threatened by volume of silence. Devastation from cancellation. Cancellation for devastation. No. Cancellation to devastation. Oh. Cancellation because of devastation. Then we'll repeat it all again. Drowning amplification existence threatened by volume of silence. Drowning amplification existence threatened by volume of silence. Devastation from cancellation. Cancellation for devastation. Conciliate. Smooth. 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 Smooth out. Smooth. Smooth. Smooth the fram. Ukent terrain. Devastation from cancellation. Cancellation. For devastation. Conciliate. Snoo. 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 Snoo thy. Snoo. Snoo. Snoo step from. Ukent terrain. Away from. Apart from. Can you hear me? This is not the same time now. Are you there? Away from, apart from. Can you hear me? This is not the same time now. Are you there? De vet ingenting. Verden har ingenting. De vet ingenting. Jeg vil ut. Vi vet ingenting. Verden har ingenting. Vi vet ingenting. Jeg vil ut. As flesh of wood and bones of sticks, plant yourself in this time. Out we go. The roots go up and out. As flesh of wood and bones of sticks, plant yourself in this time. Out we go, the roots go up and out. Just patience. This is not the same time now. Connection. Rootless, out we go. We find solace there. Amplify. Rootless, out we go. Pust, patience, plant yourself in this time. Remember, rootless, out we go. Lenger, lenker I fast. Are you there? Pust. Patience. This is not the same time now. Connection. Rotlus. Out we go. We find solace there. Amplify. Rotlus. Out we go. Boost. Patience. Plant yourself in this time. Remember, Rutlus, out we go. Lingere lingere i kvast. Are you there?
Well, that was it. We've come to the end of the show. That's everything that we worked on together this summer. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in to share in the work created in the first ever online Manhattan Experimental Theater Workshop. We hope you enjoyed it. As promised, I'm here to give you a little bit of information. The first piece of information is how you can make a donation if you wish to. If you're considering making a donation, you can do so through the Manhattan Arts Center's website at manhattanarts.org. You can follow this link right here in the video. The link can also be found in the description beneath this video and on our show page. When you get to the Arts Center's website, there's a large button in the top right hand corner that says donate. You can click that button, it'll open a PayPal portal. Once you've specified the amount you wish to donate, if you would like to specify any portion of that donation to go to MXTW, you can write that in the add a note field. Any part of your donation not specified to go to MXTW will go to support all of the wonderful programming at the Manhattan Arts Center, which is really a great resource for all kinds of arts in the Manhattan community. If you make a donation, thank you. We are truly, truly grateful. The second piece of information I'm here to give you is about the talkback. So you're all invited to a live talkback. If you have questions about what you saw in the show or questions about how we did our work this summer, we would love to answer those questions for you. You'll have the opportunity to type your questions into chat and then cast members and members of the directing team will answer your questions. So we'd love to have lots of you join us. You can follow this link right here in the video. This link can also be found in the description beneath this video and on our show page. So we really hope that lots of you will be able to join us. If you're not able to join us for the talkback, thank you very much for tuning in again, and we hope you have a wonderful night. <laughs>